What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. So markets here are slightly pushing higher with the Dow Jones rallying over 400, 500 points with the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 also moving higher. Intraday, we did see some volatility, but nonetheless, we did close green to start off this week. So hope you guys are doing great. This is also inflation week. We do have CPI numbers coming out later this week on August 10th, which is going to be a Thursday. And of course, PPI numbers also coming out. I'm just going to make sure that this is indeed Thursday when the CPI numbers come out. So August 10th. Yep. So it's going to be Thursday when those numbers are going to be released. Now, as always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. The link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board and the first week of the month is the best time to join and you get access to all the binds alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, everything's going to be included as well as the members only private videos and the intrinsic value uh, spreadsheets and the trade ideas as well. So links are going to be down below. Uh, I've, As I mentioned earlier, I am in, indeed in Dubai right now and I took my family out to the desert yesterday and we had some uh, really really amazing uh, camel riding experiences and this right here is me um, with a camel uh, his name was Hamsaya and we had two different camels as well uh, Nimer and Shaheen so those were other two camels but just had an amazing time it was obviously very hot so we had to stay hydrated but nonetheless it was just a fantastic experience with the family and then we also had some like very traditional Emirati like desserts um, and of course tea coffee it was just a really really pleasant experience with a very nice vibe uh, and you can just like sit down enjoy some activities enjoy some shows um, and overall just top-notch top-class experience so I highly encourage you guys if you ever come to Dubai just let me know and I'm happy to show you guys around so this right here the Dow Jones um, jumps more than 400 points S&P 500 Nasdaq snaps a four-day losing streak as stocks rebound um, and of course we had stocks again moving higher the Dow finished 1.2 percent higher its best daily performance since June 15th and the S&P added 0.9 percent Nasdaq rising over 0.6 percent so a little bit of rotation not quite exactly a rotation but definitely the Dow performing much better then the Nasdaq and something that we have talked about of being a little bit more defensive in the next five months um, of the year, just being more cautious with the rallies that we've already seen and obviously not over leveraging ourselves, not kind of, you know, doubling down on big tech, but instead looking at other places where there might be opportunity. By the way, one more thing that I want to ask you guys is that I was talking to one of our members yesterday and they recommended um, that, that we actually do also add our analysis and coverage on European markets and European stocks. And that's something that I've been kind of meaning to get into, just never really had that encouragement or that push. So if you guys are interested, and if you'd like me to start adding, again, nothing will change from the core of the business, US markets, the most traded, the most volume, the most popular market in the world, we're still going to be analyzing uh, and of course doing videos on that particular thing right that particular market nothing's going to change this is just going to be an addition for european markets and of course the cac 40 the dax the FTSE 100 um you know the german indexes of course and the Ita italian indexes all these different indexes in europe and all these different stocks in europe is what we are going to potentially analyze if that is something you guys are interested in. So again, wherever we go with this channel, I want you guys to be a part of it. Obviously, you guys are the most valuable you know, thing of this channel. So I want to ask you guys if that is something you're comfortable with, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know in the comments, yes, no. And we'll definitely see uh, you know, what, the, what the consensus is. And then we'll maybe add or not add that European segment to our market coverages and it's going to be separate videos maybe even separate channel uh going over again like i said the european indexes and european stocks as well so um don't forget focus too heavily on rich yields on the short end of the curve says cities christian bitterly so short end of the curve meaning that we do have the six month the one year the three month yielding very very nicely five and a half closer to six percent so that's a very very strong rate but uh, Kristen's, Kristen Bitterly is basically talking about how you should be looking at the longer end of the curve, which basically is the five year, giving you just a little bit over 4%, which is quite good because there is no reinvestment risk because yields could be lower six months from now, one year from now, but if you're locked in at the longer end of the curve, say five years, you're going to get that rate 
pretty much uh, for the next five years. But if you do go with the, like a shorter end, six month, three month, then there's no guarantees. There's no certainty as to whether you're going to get that rate when you re once you reinvest. So PayPal launches first dollar backed stable coin from a major US financial institution. I will be doing a separate, more dedicated video on this as well. This was one of the reasons why PayPal was moving higher on the day. Palantir reported earnings after the bell, reporting a 13% revenue growth issues guidance at tops estimates. And yeah, the stock price was very, very flat. In, in fact, it actually dropped here and then rallied back higher. And this right here, Apple's iPhone 15 is reportedly set for mid-September launch. I will be one of those people who does upgrade after an 11. So it's going to be a four-year upgrade for me. So I can't wait for Apple to, around, uh, to basically announce the uh, launch of this iPhone around September 22nd. So it's going to be pretty much a little over a month away for Apple's brand new iPhone 15. Now, this right here was the state of the market. So everything pretty much pushing higher. We had Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, Nvidia, uh, Tesla here slightly down, Apple slightly down. Apple continues to see that lower lows um, and, and break down below that 21 EMA, something that we did talk about. So that's a big technical breakdown for, for Apple. And uh, again, this right here, the state of the market, everything was you know pushing higher. Everything was slowly and steadily green except for obviously Apple, Tesla, and a little bit of biotech, which did struggle on the day. So uh, utilities, significant underperformance, but comm services, financials, real estate, industrials, all these sectors pushing higher. In the last one week, we pretty much have all 11 sectors selling off because last week was red. And in the last one month, we do have utilities, the only sector that's underperformed and it's down. Everything else has been pushing higher um, in the last one month. And of course, in the last one day for commodities, for futures, lean hogs, coffee prices, orange juice, lumber prices. We do have soybean, crude oil, everything pushing higher with live cattle, wheat, feeder cattle, canola, cocoa, oats, all pushing down. Bitcoin just a little bit over 29,000, Ether just over 1,800 as well. So if you come over to Bitcoin, again, there's not a lot of analysis here because we're just consolidating sideways. We're just moving in that range where support is at 28,300, resistance all the way up to 31,000. And Ether here, on the other hand, is also just consolidating sideways at that support. Very, very important at 1820, 1800. If you do break down below this level, then that 200 SMA is going to be the one to watch very, very closely. And if you took, if you take a look at crude oil, we are once again starting to see some upside here. Um, on the week, it is up a little bit over 43. Uh, actually, on the month, it's up 43 basis points. But as you can see that we're already starting to consolidate a little bit sideways, but we have also broken out of that range of well over $80 a barrel right now sitting at just over $82 a barrel as well and just consolidating sideways. This has been a very, very strong run for crude oil on, on the supply demand imbalances and all the uncertainty around supply cuts. Uh, but of course, this is going to be that huge support at $81, $80 a barrel. If you do break down, of course, next support down to 73 but if this rally continues, then we have to really watch $93 a barrel as that next resistance for crude oil. Inflation numbers are definitely going to be impacted, in my opinion, from the rally that we've seen in crude. 14%, 16% rally in the month of July from crude oil. And of course, gasoline, retail gasoline prices also up 10 to 12% in the month of July. So again, it's going to be quite interesting what those CPI numbers end up looking like here on Thursday, August 10th. Going over to the markets, so S&P 500 here, I'm getting a little bit of a bounce back higher. So, um, you know, we did start to break down below that 21 EMA and it really came down to today. So this was one thing that I did mention with one of our members, we were having a Zoom call and I mentioned that if today we don't get bought up, right? If today we don't see a very strong rally back higher, then it's more likely that we continue to see some accelerated sell off. And the reason for that is because every time we break down below that 21 EMA, if the bulls don't step in right on the next day, like for example, over here, April 27, we rallied almost 2% after breaking down below the 21 EMA a couple times. This right here, same exact thing, right? It, uh, May 4th, right? The following day, we were up 1.85%. We broke down below the 21 EMA. The bulls did a really good job kind of pushing us back and reclaiming that 21 exponential moving average. This right here, almost an identical situation. May 24th broke down below the 21 EMA, two back-to-back -back red days. The following day, the bulls once again step in and we push up 88 basis points. So the sooner we are able to reclaim the 21 EMA, the sooner we are able to regain that momentum on the upside, the, the far less likely it is that for the bears to push us down even further and continue that accelerated sell-off. So in this example, almost an identical thing, right? We had three... Uh, you know, almost four back-to-back -back days. So this right here, market was red, market was red, market was red, market was red last week as well. Like four out of five days, the markets were down Yes, uh, last week. And then we had an immediate 
bounce back higher, a little bit of a dead cat bounce, the bull stepping back in, and we're back over that 21 EMA. So that again is very similar to what we have already seen, just because we break down below the 21 EMA, doesn't automatically bring us you know, all the way down to that next support, but it really depends on, of course, whether the buyers step in, volume was decent, and we're back over that 21 EMA. So support level is gonna stay for roughly at 44, 42, so like 44, 45 around those levels. Uh, and of course, resistance and targets gonna be 46, 146.25 um, for S&P moving forward. So we've seen a very nice consistent uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, resistance at 4,600, like I said, and 44.50 is gonna be that support level. Talking about the NASDAQ here, and NASDAQ continues to uh, consolidate a little bit sideways. We are at support, sitting roughly at 13,850, and you can see the low for the day, 13,864, so to the T, not exactly, but very, very close to that support. Still getting rejected at that 21 EMA, but really we're just, you know, trading sideways, all resistance now acting as a support. And we're kind of like in that middle of that range. So if you do see some more momentum upside, 14,600 is going to be that resistance. And of course, support level is going to stay put at 13,380 for the Nasdaq as well. Talking about Apple. Now, Apple has definitely seen some more sell-off here, accelerated sell-off. And guess where we bounce off of today? Low for the day, 177.35. My support, 177.21. You just can't make these things up. Very nice support here and a pretty significant breakdown below the 21 EMA, right? So, I mean, RSI, MACD, all of a sudden is now oversold uh, within, within a couple days. And we have definitely seen a lot of volume and a lot of selling pressure with market cap now, once again, at $2.8 trillion. So it was, again, we've talked about this, right? This is not new news. This, is not, this should not be surprising to anyone. Um, it's only a matter of time before valuations do get a reset. You never have a company that's immune to everything. You will have companies, um, you know, kind of ebb and flow with this economic cycles, with their own business cycles. So it's just a matter of time before we start to see some profit taking, before we start to see some bounces, before we start to see some reversals. No move is going to be sustained forever. If you see a stock price going higher, just remember that's not going to be the case forever. If you see a stock price going down, just remember, that's not going to be the case forever unless, and that's a caveat, unless uh, the company is literally on the verge of bankruptcy, right? If the company is performing really poorly, then yes, it can go on for a very long time until the stock eventually gets delisted. But for the most part, if it is a quality company, if it's a high you know, quality business with well-run management, um, then of course, if the price is coming down, that has nothing to do with how the company is performing, right? So eventually you will start to see that move back higher so you will see that move kind of reverse course and start pushing up or start pushing down depending on the situation so same with apple right very strong move uh all this year so it's gone literally from um you know 124 dollars in january all the way up to 198 to so 200 dollars. it's a 60 percent move for apple that's a pretty sizable move when you consider apple's market cap and of course it started to break down more recently on the back of earnings 21 ema breaking down support level 177 now in case we see a breakdown this week if inflation comes in hot if uh you know jerome powell at the jackson hole meeting in august later in august is super hawkish whatever if the market starts to break down further here and if apple starts to break below 177 next support right here 159 and this is going to be a fantastic like one of the best swing trading prices for apple you can ever ask for the risk reward is going to be far better than where it's trading at the moment that'll be down a little bit over closer to 20 percent and 20 percent is like the average uh average how much average on average apple is usually down right so 157 158 is going to be a very strong support very nice support for apple to watch talking about amazon amazon here continues to get bought up so pushing right back up and uh you know obviously last week on friday it did sell, sell off intraday on the back of some other uh you know macroeconomic factors even though the earnings were great fantastic earnings and it deserved to be higher it sold right back down and today we're kind of normalizing once again and resistance is going to be 146 support level at closer to 137 for uh for for amazon now look at tesla again another one of our examples literally came down to that support at 242 we talked about how tesla can certainly be in the 240s very very soon and uh, we literally just came down to $242, that white line you guys see, that's a support, uh, and of course get bought up, right? So intraday, lots of buyers are stepping in, $9 move from low to high, and of course we're, we're getting bought up there. So support level is going to stay put at $240, and resistance all the way up to $275 for, uh, for Tesla moving forward. 
uh, talking a little bit about Nvidia right now. So Nvidia on the day also just really consolidating sideways up a little bit over 1.6%. But for the most part, it really has been consolidating sideways. So resistance is going to stay put at 479, 478. Support level is going to stay put at 440 for Nvidia with all the way down to 407, of course, down to 350s. Valuations massive, like it's, it's insane how crazy expensive uh, Nvidia really is. Uh, so of, of course, that's uh, that's one thing that we have to constantly be aware of and be cautious of. Um, so resistance, like I said, 480, and we've got earnings coming up later this month. So we'll take a look at what they actually end up reporting. Advanced micro devices, uh, again, consolidating sideways, so not really moving all that much. And we have just been, you know, going zigzagging in that price range with the resistance at 120, support at 107. So that $13 range uh, seems to be very strong support, uh, very strong sort of like resistance and support here for AMD. But of course, in case we break down below 107, I will be ready with my dry powder to start selling some puts on advanced micro devices. And of course, we've got those moving averages, the 200 SMA, the 300 SMA sitting roughly at $87, $88. So those right there are going to be some levels to also watch and pay attention to for advanced micro devices. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, PayPal here and PayPal on the day pushing up over 2.6%. So decent recovery, decent bounce back higher after two really consecutive back to back brutal days. Um, and resistance again is going to be all the way up to 69 to $70. A lot of the work that PayPal actually put in was wiped off because of the earnings. But there's a lot of um, there's there's the only reason for that obviously is the decrease in transaction take rate, the decline in active accounts, both of those very, very marginal negatives versus a lot of the fundamental positives that they reported. And I think the company needs to come up with a new management plan and a new vision for the business so that they can reignite that excitement, reignite that confidence and that growth for the company once again. It's got potential, fundamentals are solid, but the price action obviously is not that great. So support level is going to put stay put at 60, resistance all the way up to 69 to $70 per share for PayPal. Talking about Square, and Square also has been selling off quite aggressively. We talked about the potential short trade idea on this on this stock coming up to a resistance, very, very overbought. Of course, three to four back-to-back -back red days and now sitting at support at 62. I will be doing an earnings uh, video on Square. Uh, there's been a lot of requests for doing a video on blocks, so we'll be doing that very, very soon. Uh, but support level, like I said, is going to be 62 down to 59, down to the strongest support at 51, $50 per share for this company. And of course, now the RSI and MACD are much more uh, in, in, in a better level, down to oversold levels compared to where they were just a few days ago. Uh, talking about Meta platforms here, and Meta on the day continues to push higher over 1.88%. Support level is going to stay put at roughly $300. So this right here is going to be that support resistance all the way up to 351. So that is going to be a more near-term target for us to watch. Uh, but right now, we're just really consolidating. So we did gap up after the earnings. We came back down to kind of fill that gap. And right now, we're just kind of sitting above that 21 EMA. Um, and, and resistance, like I said, at 351, that's going to be the level to pay attention to. Netflix, uh, on the other hand, also pushing higher up a little bit over 2%. For the most part, it's been consolidating sideways in that range. So this right here has been pretty much that range for, for Netflix. And uh, resistance is going to be at 458, support level closer to 411 for Netflix as well. So those right there are going to be some couple levels to watch for, for Netflix. And right now, we're obviously just trading in that range trading sideways uh next up we've got google here and google on the day pushing higher a little bit over 2.65 percent so resistance is going to be all the way up to 131 132 so those right there are going to be some levels to watch and of course support level at close to 127 very strong day for google um and of course the next target is going to be up to 144 if you do get a breakout about 132 tomorrow um actually yeah, so I mean, my support, yeah, 131.92 is my support. It closed at 131.94. So next resistance target is going to be at 144 for Google with a support level at closer to 127, all the way down to 115. My fair value obviously still in sub, sub 100. And uh, finally, we got Microsoft, Shopify, and Phase. Microsoft here is still breaking below its 21 EMA, trading below the 21 EMA. Support level is going to stay put at 322. So this right here is going to be that level to watch with a resistance all the way up to 350. Uh, and of course, support level down to 312. So we're seeing a lot of consolidation here for Microsoft. And in my opinion, I think the valuation is still a little too high. So wouldn't be surprised if we do start to kind of break down a little bit more, come down and break below 322, maybe even 312 for uh, for Microsoft moving forward. Uh, next up, we've got a Shopify and Shopify here also continues to sell off a little bit over 62 basis points. Support level is going to stay put at 54. So that's the level that we're really watching a resistance at 66. And uh, there was a bit of a rising wedge pattern for Shopify, so it continued to kind of trade in that range before finally starting to see that breakdown, pretty aggressive breakdown after the earnings. Support level, like I said, is going to be 54. 
And uh, last but not least, we got Enphase Energy. So ENPH continues to sell off down another 3.25%, so coming down to the 130s. Definitely starting to enter into our good deal territory. People, I'm going to say it once, and I'm only going to say this once. A lot of you guys have been asking me questions. Yes, my plan is to dollar cost average in the 100s, low 100s, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will dollar cost average. My plan is dollar cost average in the 120s, in the 110s, in the low 100s. Uh, and of course, the valuations have come down significantly for Enphase. And this is almost the identical same level it's come down to that it was trading at during the January 2022, uh, May 2021, and of course, May 2022. So yes, so support level is going to be in that good deal area in the 110s, 120s. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And uh, again, you know, we've got inflation numbers later this week. That's really what's going to dictate what happens with the market later. Uh, of course, interest rates right now pegged at higher for longer. Five cuts in 2024 and starting in March. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.